It's a beautiful day. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us such an amazing day. I wanted to speak about hijab because hijab is something that is misunderstood even by some Muslims. And what is very, very important for us to note is that it's not just about a piece of cloth. In the Arabic language, hijab means a barrier. A barrier between two things is known as a hijab or a hajiz, you know, something that is a barrier between two things. So that is called a hijab. And the idea here is to create a barrier. When a person when a person wears clothing, the clothing needs to be such that it covers you. I mean, what's the whole idea of wearing clothing when you are not covered? I mean, what's the point? So in Islam, we believe that Allah Almighty has given us a certain type of modest beautification through clothing. And yes, uh, to cover your private parts, to cover yourself in a nice way, to look presentable. All of this is actually part and parcel of the gift of Allah Almighty upon us. So when we say hijab, many people think it's just a piece of cloth on the heads of women covering their hair, not realizing it's an entire lifestyle. That's what it is. It's it's a whole system through, you know, that we tread upon and live by uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So men, for example, also have to observe a certain level of hijab. They have to have a certain conduct. The morality needs to be on a very high level. It's very important because the difficulty we face, people look at women and say, where's your hijab? You know, and I say, well, my brother, yes. Uh, what about your eyes? Uh, should you not be also practicing or fulfilling a certain aspect of hijab, which is to lower your gaze? Uh, so at times the problem is twofold or, or more. And you cannot just blame someone and say, you know what, where is your hijab? You know, hijab, here is a hijab and you throw a piece of cloth. That's only one small aspect of it. But to dress in loose clothing is also part of the hijab for both men and women. So if there is a man wearing tight jeans, he is not fulfilling the, the, the rules and regulations of clothing in Islam, even though he might claim that my private parts are covered. But in actual fact, you've got to wear something slightly loose. It's in the hadith of the Prophet wasallam not to wear something that reveals, uh, you know, the shape of your body parts. Unless, obviously, if the wind is blowing, you're excused. Uh, or if you're walking and something happens to, you know, sometimes it shows a little bit here and there. Uh, that you're excused for. But when you are wearing your clothing and you put on something that is very tight, uh, men and women, I'm talking of men and women, and I've singled out men here because I know that a lot of people uh, say, well, men are excused from this. That's not true. You have to make sure that you've done the right thing. You have to make sure that your clothing is slightly loose. And at the same time, it's not see-through <clears throat> and it's not very thin. So it's, it's a reasonable material. It's nice, it's comfortable, it covers you and it's loose. So it doesn't show your organs or body parts. That is part of hijab. So hijab means to dress modestly in a way that pleases the Almighty for both men and women and to carry yourself in a way that would not make the opposite gender uncomfortable and would not be displeasing to the Almighty regarding the way you have carried yourself. So if you see something, uh, you know, you're supposed to lower your gaze. Lowering gazes for both male and female is part of the general rule of hijab, where there is supposed to be a barrier. What's the barrier? Well, I lowered my gaze. And you just say, subhanallah, or uh, mashallah, tabarakallah, or astaghfirullah, or whatever else it may be. So I thought it was important to spend a few moments explaining that, yes, there is a cloth that you wear to cover your hair as a female. That is a part of it. It extends to where they would like to cover their faces. That's a part of hijab. 
and people get to that level, there is a dispute amongst the scholars as to whether it is compulsory or it is not compulsory. And it's a known dispute. But the bare minimum where nobody disputes is that, inshallah, your hair is covered. That doesn't allow you to just dress in anything after that. So what happens is because my hair is covered, now I can put on something extremely tight, something very revealing in terms of cleavages and so on. We need to work on that as well. That's also a part of our hijab. Until we get to a point where we can dress with something loose, we can dress with something uh, not tight fitting, and the material is is beautiful in the sense that it's, it, you know, uh, I don't want to say thick because sometimes depending on the weather, you might want to wear something a little bit thinner. I mean, if it's winter in, in, in Europe and in Canada and so on, yes, you wear something thick. But when it comes to, uh, you know, where it is warm and so on, you can wear something that is uh, not so thick, but at the same time, not see through and not tight, not very thin that everything is showing. That's the whole idea. It's an Islamic teaching. Allah says, don't show everything that you have to everyone that is there. The, you know, uh, otherwise you will not be appreciated. You will not be appreciated by those who are supposed to value you. And you know, I may not understand. You may not understand what exactly that might be referring to. People argue, no, show it. You want people to judge you based on who you are, your performance is, the goodness is, and you don't want people uh, to only and simply judge you based on the shape of your butt or based on uh, what you look like and how, how well you've made yourself up. A lot of the times, the, the makeup that we have is actually uh, not even us. We ourselves wouldn't recognize ourselves if we were shown a photo of ourselves with makeup before we saw ourselves in the mirror in cases today. That's how that's how it's become where we're so dissatisfied with our looks and so on that we just don't want to uh, admit that I don't love myself the way Allah's made me. Part of hijab is to love yourself the way Allah has made you to appreciate it, to thank Allah for it. And guess what? To dress in a beautiful, modest way whereby your body parts are not being revealed. Now, I address the men. Many men think that, well, it's okay. You know, I can wear these skinny jeans and I can have these tight, you know, tight shorts. And so, you know, no, no. Part of hijab is that you do not do that. The rule applies to men as well, where you're supposed to wear something that's not tight fitting. You're supposed to wear something that's not very thin. It's not supposed to be revealing of your organs and your body parts, especially from the navel to the knee. And subhanAllah, you should make sure that you adopt that. So many times people pick on the women and say, oh, you know, these women are not in hijab. But my brother, you're worse sometimes. And yes, I do know a lot of effort is required and a lot of work is required by all of us when it comes to improving the way we manage the hijab lifestyle, like lowering your gaze. Similarly, part of hijab is the way you speak. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was instructed by Allah and his wives were instructed by Allah Almighty. And when you speak to people, speak in a certain way, you know, uh, with a certain barrier and so on. So the reality is the way you speak also depicts whether or not you live a lifestyle of hijab, both men and women. If you're going to flirt, if you're going to, for example, uh, try and uh, attract the opposite sex with your words or your voice and if you and so on, you're not observing the hijab correctly. Hijab should be such that you are respectfully speaking to the opposite gender when needed and you may uh, uh, inquire about them or their health and so on or what may be what they may need. It's, but hijab requires you to speak very respectfully to the opposite gender with utmost respect. They should see the character in you of modesty, honesty, uh, goodness and so on. So that is really amazing. I think all of us need to do better, including myself, when it comes to the way we lead this lifestyle of hijab by the will of Allah. So I need to be more conscious of the way I speak to the opposite gender. I need to be more conscious as a male uh, about how 
I lower my gaze and how much pleasure I get by lowering the gaze for the sake of Allah. I'm pleased because I've pleased Allah. And you will find that element of respect will be so amazing. And then when it comes to uh, my dress code, I need to make sure that I don't wear tight clothing, that which is revealing, that which is very thin, that which, you know, for me as a man. And subhanAllah, people say, well, I'm wearing jeans, it's quite thick. But my brother, these are skinny jeans. Do you know, it's not necessarily, it's, it is actually not on the ideal teachings of you. For you as a Muslim, you're supposed to be wearing something not as tight fitting. But who's there to tell you? No one. Because why? You're a man and you think, well, hijab is for a woman. There goes. This is where we've gone wrong. So my brothers, my sisters, I've spoken about what I should be doing and let me say the sisters too, inshallah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can do better when it comes to the rest of our clothing after the scarf on the head. Inshallah, we can make sure that it's slightly looser. We can make sure the material is a beautiful material that's not revealing and not so tight fitting and so on. And we will earn the pleasure and mercy of Allah. In this way, we will protect ourselves and others from a lot of evil and harm. And Allah Almighty will indeed bless us. Uh, inshallah, I'm looking forward to the month of Ramadan. We're planning a good series by the will of Allah. And inshallah, I, I will probably be moving from uh, country to country, a few countries and a few cities. And I pray that closer to the time we would be able to reveal a little bit more in that regard. In the meantime, preparation for Ramadan includes that you start looking into your dress code. And you start making sure that you've improved even in your dress code. What's the point of a person fasting all day? Subhanallah. And yet you've messed up when it comes to your clothing because, uh, you know, you might have fasted, but you made others drool. May Allah forgive us. May Allah grant us ease and goodness. If Allah's given you a lot, you know, it's good to follow what Allah has said regarding the uh, regarding the rules and regulations of clothing because Allah's given it to you. Alhamdulillah, we are happy to announce the launch of the One Islam TV app. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets, and so much more. Two new videos uploaded daily, insha'Allah. Watch videos on demand, or download videos and watch offline. No more annoying ads or pop-ups. 100% safe browsing for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest, or drive with your device switched off. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means the small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariyah, continuous charity for you, as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders. Insha'Allah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.